Hello and hello, um, and welcome to the Adelaide Town Hall. Um, I'm in here to practice at the moment, and I have been practicing. But I figured I've got my camera here so I can review my, um, you know, practicing time. Um, so I might as well give you a quick stop demonstration of the instrument. Um, a bit more of a complete one than I have up on the channel at the moment. So yeah, we'll start from the great, move our way up to the solo. Um, so you can see this is a four manual instrument, it's built by J.W. Walker in 1990, um, it's got the nameplate, it's just up above the um, music desk, it just has my phone on there because that's what I used to read sheet music off of when I can't be bothered bringing physical sheet music or an iPad or something. Um, I forgot my iPad and didn't have any physical sheet music with me so here we have a phone. Um, it has a couple of mirrors you can't quite see. The detailing is rather lovely. Um, and this replaced an earlier instrument by um, William Hill and Son from 1877, um, which is now in the Memorial, um, Soldiers Memorial Hall in Tanunda, um, in the Barossa Valley. And I will be doing a documentary on that organ um, soon, like a proper documentary. We've got actual um, you know, camera people and things on here, which is going to be fantastic, so look out for that in the future. Anyway, we have four manuals. They are, of course, choir, great, swell, and solo division, as per standard um, English um, organ nomenclature. Um, the organ is fairly neoclassical. Um, it calls back to an English sound, um, a pre-romantic English sound. Um, but it has very French reeds, they're very powerful um, and quite smooth in places um, where a um, kind of pre-romantic English trumpet wouldn't be. So they're very French reeds, they've got some fire to them. Um, but before we get to the reeds, we've got to start with the flues. So on the grate we have an open diapason eight foot. horn eight foot instead of an open diapason number two and a chimney flute eight foot where the gem horn Double open diapason, 16 foot. Now it's interesting to note that the bottom few notes are yeah. So from D sharp, the bass, four notes are um, stopped wooden pipes, um, with bottom E being, I can show you, oh, it's up there, uh, the middle facade pipe of this tower. So, oh, I just turned off that fluid head <laughs> a little too much. Alrighty, let's get back to business. Now, um, what am I saying? Um, okay, so we've got double open diapason. With the open diapason. Mm, chimney flick and gamish horn. And the open diapason for a pretty good melange. foot principle. Now you'll notice that these, um, as I said, these flues are very they have a, a they're in some ways a bit stringier than you would find them, usually a bit keener and much clearer. They've got a bit of a crystal quality to them um, which is really good for um, counterpoint 
and, and less good for the kind of big, um, romantic kind of, you know. Stuff that we, we're kind of used to on an English organ. And the principle is nothing different, it's very bright. Bit of a small scale to the open diapason for obvious reasons. But blends very well with it. That's the um, with the double open diapason. Putting the principal on top of the chimney flute. It's still enough to support it. Gemschorn. And the chimney flute. Um. Open diapason and double. Beautiful. Have a tapered flute of um, Spitz flutes kind of thing. Um, it, is, it is tapered flute. All of the stop names are in fairly plain English. There's um, not really anything um, incredibly French or incredibly German, except for the trumpet and bombard and stuff up there, but, and the Vossalist. But uh, other than that, it's a very English um, nomenclature on here. Um, tapered flute with the chimney flute. Um, we have a 15th. Very bright 15th. Which apparently has a bit of a cipher somewhere. That's not very good. I'll write that down in the book. Um, but on top of the open diapason in principle. Very nice. Clear principle chorus with the double. Now the mixtures, we have a furniture, which is spelled F-U-R-N, um, furniture, F-U-R-N-T-I-U-R-E, furniture. Um, it's a six rank mixture on a two and two thirds um, basis. You'll notice that there are not any mutations um, on the grate at all. They're all in mixtures. Um, yeah. Now with the principles from eight to two. It's very, gives it a lot of body and very, still very clear though, it's not muddying at anything. Lots of definition in the bass as you want in a mixture. With the taper flute and chimney flute, it just fills it up a little bit. And the gamish horn. And now with the double as well. I think that needs a little bit of a tune. Now, I saw a meme a little bit earlier today and it really frustrated me and it said something about not using flutes and principles together. And this is why Americans can't register on British organs. And I know this because I've seen them and watched them struggle, right? Open diapason, do not be afraid to put it with the chimney flute on an English organ they are voiced to go together. It just adds more sound. And now with it on again. Same doesn't matter. We then have a cymbal of four ranks. 
just based on two thirds, just with the furniture, just the two mixtures alone. Yeah, sounds pretty much like you would expect. Now with all of the principles. And the flutes and the gemshorn. That gives you the entire flute chorus. Um, now we have a cornet, eight ranks. This is an incredibly pungent cornet. It's mounted um, as cornets should be. Of course it doesn't have a... It goes out at tenor if I forgot about that. Uh. Um, yeah, it's a very nice cornet. Um, and of course... The reason that cornets exist is to um, bolster the reeds. That's why they go, don't go down into the bass. If anybody is wondering, it's because back in the day, um, in the French um, instruments from whence they come, um, it's very easy to make a very powerful sound with a very large pipe. It is very difficult to make a powerful sound with a very small pipe. And this is the thing that kind of it goes all the way back to um, the earliest kind of Blockwerk organs. The reasons that Blockwerk organs existed is because to match the power of the massive pipes in the bass, you needed a lot of tiny pipes in the treble. So you would go from you know two pipes in the bass on the keyboard to you know forty pipes on the top note, which is where mixtures come from. But it's also where we get the the problem with reeds. Making very small reed pipes that sound very powerful is very difficult. So with a cornet it emulates that reed sound and it adds power to the treble because you're putting a mixture in the treble, which is why they exist. That's a very powerful sound. Now the trumpet, you'll notice, it's there, but it's not as powerful as it's going to be in the bass. So you combine them together, it makes it a very smooth, very prescient sound. And it equalizes the bass and the treble, especially when you add, say, the double trumpet and the clarion, and you have the full kind of just the the, the grand jeu, which would also require the tiny flute and chimney flute, but you know. You know, that's a really powerful sound balanced in the treble with that cornet. You see the difference, you can really, really hear the difference. And then you add the cornet and you've got that much more powerful sound. Anyway, right, now we're moving on to the choya. Love a good choya. Um, we start off with an open diapason. Um, so the way that it is structured, we have the choir division on, on the casework, we have the choir division, the great division, the solo division is kind of up, very at the top, kind of just behind the great. Then at the back you have a swell box, and on either side, in two towers, you have the pedal division. Um, so the swell is kind of buried right at the back of the instrument, which is, you know, perfectly fine for this instrument. Um, now we have open diapason on the choir. Speaks very promptly, and it is right above my head, so that the choir division is there, and the great division on top. Uh, we have a stop diapason, eight foot. It's a lovely sound, the two together, because you can do that. Why? I don't know about Americans anymore, seriously. It's weird. Have a principal four. With the open diapason. Stop diapason. That's how you get a full sound. Add the stop diapason. Four foot chimney flute. If you hadn't noticed, the action is very, very mechanical. This is this is a. Oh, if we just. There we go. This stop here is very important to the mechanical action, and I'll explain what this does in a quick second once we get to it, but um, for the moment, 
Anyway, <laughs> um, that's not important for the moment, but we're just going to leave that on. So that's the chimney flute with the open diapason. Um, with the stop diapason. We'll contrast that with the chimney flute and tapered flute on the grate. Different sound, still beautiful flute chorus. Um, we then have a Nazard, Nazard, uh, 23rd. Beautiful with the stop diapason. Um, with the chimney flute as well. Um, we have a 15th two foot. With the principal and open diapason. And the Nazard. With the chimney flute and stop diapason. Beautiful sound there. There's a recorder, two foot. sound with the Nazard, the chimney flute and the stop diapason. With a tierce, one and three fifths for a really nice little cornet. Combine those two, the Nazard and the Tears, with the principal chorus. Which is a lot more in line with the cornet. It's kind of almost it's girl terror, but you know. We have a Larigo, uh, one and one third. With the stop diaper, isn't it good? We actually have a Siflet one foot. Yeah, it repeats in the top octave like I thought it did. Beautiful. With the recorder, the chimney flute, and the stop diapason. a sharp mixture. Um, actually no, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all the mutations um, and the flumes on. So this is everything kind of sounds the, the um, principal chorus. So it's kind of like a very extended cornet that you would find on like a Castilian organ. Ooh, that was fun. And the key, the key tops are a bone um, as well. Very, very kind of subtle chamfer, which I do like. It's a beautiful sound. Anyway, we have a sharp mixture, full rank. one foot pitch for the open diaphase in principle, um, 15th 
Stotto Pays and Chimney Flute and the Recorder. <laughs> Provides a very good foil to the to the grate. Um, surprisingly. It's a lighter sound, but it's still there. And it's still enough um, to, yeah, still enough to do a lot of things. Um, sorry, my brain's all over the place. We have, of course, a crumb horn, a cremona. <laughs> The Cremona. It's a very pungent Cremona. It's nothing, it's not clarinetty. It's very regally. Um, and if we put it with the chimney flute, it gives it a little bit more body. We have the stop die pace as well. And with a tears and a recorder for to kind of back it up with a bit of a cornet sound. Yeah, lovely little thing. There is also a tremulant um, on every single um, division, including the pedal. There is a pedal tremulant. Um, I can demonstrate that. And the chimney flute um, on the grate, and it's tremulant. We're moving on to the swell now. The swell's over here. I'm going to just adjust the camera so you can kind of see the... Uh, I have to kind of come around the corner a little bit. There we go. This is a very unprofessional um, thing that I'm doing, but whatever. Uh, the amount that I could care is so close to zero that um, it's not even, bother, not even worth talking about. Anyway, so now I think it's actually a good time to talk about this little thing here. Um, you don't know if you can see what's written on it. It says assisted coupling because this thing is mechanical, which is fantastic. It has that lovely sound of connections and the lovely clicky clacky feel. It's like a mechanical keyboard. If you don't, if you've never played a uh, mechanical action organ, it is very much like a typing with a mechanical keyboard. You, you have a really nice tactile response. Anyway, um, I have this in and I pull on all of the couplers to the grate. You can see, whenever I press a key, it moves all of the keys, that's even on the choir, it moves all of the keys on the keyboards. Now, this is fantastic. It means that you can have really big chords that, you know, do impressive things and you can, I don't know, play play Bjorn um, very spectacularly, but it's difficult to press the key down. It requires a lot of tractive effort on the hand of your finger. Um, so the assisted coupling is a must-have for this style of instrument. What it does is these manuals are still coupled, but now it's done electronically. Um, I can demonstrate this if I put a um, so the chimney flip on the choir. That's still doing it. There you go. It's a cool little trick. Um, but it means that you can play, you know, very quickly. 
on this organ without having to deal with the horrendous mechanical action. Well, it's not horrendous, it's a really nice mechanical action, but the horrendous um, weight of the mechanical action when coupled together. Anyway, so that's why I keep this stop firmly on. I don't know why anybody would actually turn it off, but, you know, people are strange sometimes. Anyway, we have a um, swell division. So, this is one of those organs that, for me, has a bit of a, a split personality syndrome. Um, and the organ here in Adelaide in the Elder Hall has kind of the same... I don't know if i call it an issue, but it's certainly a, a thing that um, happens, especially in kind of older classical organs, or neoclassical, neo-baroque style organs, is that we have an instrument which is fundamentally... Um, two manuals of it, these two manuals, the bottom two keyboards, the, the choir and the great, are very, very, very classical. And then the swell, which is this division up here, is incredibly romantic. It has all of the sounds that you need to perform, the works of, um, you know, Vidor and uh, Saint-Jean's and um, Vienna, all that kind of stuff. You know, we have a, a we have a diapason. It's not an open diapason. It's a diapason because it's the French. It's a French diapason. Now, this can be a little bit problematic if you're trying to use the rest of the organ how it was originally intended, or or as some of the trying to do some things on here, um, like it's... The one, the one thing I wish that people would put on their um, faux French Ressi divisions attached to two manuals of um, classical organ, which is what happened at um, Elder Hall, put a flipping cornet on there, please. Like, that's the only stop that you need, really, on the third manual of a classical instrument is a cornet. Um, or, you know... If you're doing a Brustwerk, then it's a Brustwerk, but you're not doing a Brustwerk, you're making a French thing. Put a, put a Cornet on there. That's like the, the Cornet de Ressi is the only reason that the Ressi was invented in the first place. It's another solo stop, and you know, you're trying to perform various pieces of um, French, Brock, and classical repertoire, and then suddenly you don't have the single stop that you need on that manual. It's just kind of frustrating. Like, it's an oversight that people have that we've got, okay, we've got two manuals where it's very classical, very, very romantic. Sorry, not very romantic, very classical, very Baroque. And then we've got one manual of romantic. And the two kind of meet in the middle somewhere, but you're making compromises that kind of cripple both at the same time, um, which is really the only criticism I have this instrument. And, it, you know, this one manages it really well, but it's a bit of a, more of an issue over at Elder Hall. Um, yeah, so organ builders, if you're out there, please, please don't do that. <laughs> I find it so annoying. Um, that's, that's my little rant out of the way. Let's listen to the rest of this uh, swell division. So, we have a diapason, eight foot. We have, then, a solitional. Um... This is much more of an English solitional than a um, French uh, viol de gambe or something like that. It is not keen. It's a string, but it's softer, it's mellower, it's not really keen and acidic like a French string. Paired it with the voix celeste, and I think this is honestly the best um, string celeste in the entirety of Adelaide. And I've played a lot of the organs in Adelaide, and I keep on coming back to this one as the um, <laughs> the, the best one. Such a beautiful sound. Really do enjoy it. There's a stopped flute, which is uh, some ways uh, buried back. Uh, part of it being back, uh, buried in the back of the instrument is that the sounds get softer and a bit mellowed, especially at the console. Out in the um, auditorium, it's a different thing, but uh, in here, it's a bit, they're a bit more muted.
А ты слышал? Then with the Voix Celeste. have the quintaton. Yes, which is spelt quintaton, um, which is supposed to be a bit of a fifthier um, stopped flute, but we shall see. Yeah, it's still got a very present fifth component with the diapason solution of voice less than a stopped flute. Principle four with the diapason. Um, there's a flageolet two foot. Now with the stop flute, sounds principle and diapason. Contrasting that with the chimney flute tapered flute on the grate. And then with the flutes on the choir. Um, then we have a five rank mixture at two foot pitch with the flageolet, principal, diapason, stop flute, and clear flute. And it is, of course, a mechanical soil pedal, which is fairly heavy. Um, you, you do have to be careful with it. It is can be quite a quite a thing um, to move. Now, if we compare that, compare and contrast that with the um, just up to the furniture on the grate. It's still very prescient. Now with the quintaton as well. Present, not prescient. Present. Now I have a bassoon, 16 foot. There we go. I know how to do a music. Um, yeah, very reedy. I, I hate to say the word horny, but it's it's a very horny reed. Um, it of course does not actually compare in, in any significant way to the double trumpet on the grate. It's a bit of a difference. Yeah, anyway. Um, might compare better with the fagotto on the pedal. Yeah, still, it's uh, a lot quieter. Um, we have a harmonic trumpet, which just means that the um, treble pipes are double length. Um, 
Split the bassoon. And with the clarion. Um, compare and contrast that with the three reeds on the grate again. It's a, it's a lot less imperial sounding. It's a bit thinner um, and a bit more harmonics in there. Which I do quite like. Um, we have a harp boy as well, which is an oboe. Um, it's obwa um, <laughs> bastardised by the um, English. Um, bastardised by the English language. Bastardised by the English. Anyway, uh, it's spelt H-A-U-T-B-O-Y because of course it bloody is. Anyway, it's a very trumpety help boy. It's not a, you know, really romantic oboe. It's not creamy and smooth. It is quite pungent. With the diapason and stop flute. with the solitional and quintetone. Closing the box. Really beautiful there. Um, with the bassoon as well, and those same stops, adding in the solitional and the voix celeste. Very good saw box. I do really like this saw box. We have now a box humana. Um, we've got the clarion inside that chorus, but um, on its own. Very bright. Not a lot of harmonics in that. We also have got a vox humana. Lovely. And uh, with a tremulant, because why not? Come to the really fun division that everybody enjoys, the solo division. Um, we're back over, back over here. We'll get to the pedals last. Um, everyone's favourite division, the solo. We have a flute harmonic, flute harmonic. Sorry, harm, harmon, harmonic. It's not harmonic. It's harmonic. Anyway, it's. up every note in that but you know beautiful sound in fact we've got another flute octaviant which is just a flute harmonique but up an octave <gasps> my god and then what's this a two foot octavian that's just another harmonic flute but up an o it's another octave up So we have a whole chorus of harmonic flutes. Really quite beautiful. Um, and just the octavian and flute harmonic, because I'm sure you're wondering what that sounds like. Sounds like that. Now. <coughs> the fun things that people really enjoy, the solo reeds. 
everyone's favourite trumpet, because of course you need one of those. Um, now we can compare and contrast that with the trumpet, English speaking word on the great. Beautiful sound. Um, we then, of course, have, because this organ is fun and has three complete 16 8 4 reed choruses, a bombard. <laughs> I love that sound. Then we have a trumpet on top of that. Topping it off with a clarion. Beautiful sound, I love it. Now, there is one other stop on this solo division, um, which I don't know if you guys can see that. Oh, in the way over here. Oh, you might. Who knows? It's a royal trumpet. the other reeds, because loudness is a quality that organs definitely need to have, <laughs> ear splitting, absolutely ear splitting. <sighs> now we can move on to everyone's favourite, or the favourite division, the pedals. We start with, let's just start with a 32 foot, it's a great bass. You can feel that in the hall, I don't know if you can pick it up on the microphone. <laughs> Have an open diapason 16 foot. Uh, we have a V alone. And a porton. Now each one of those has its own 8 foot, so the open diapason has a principle. Violone has a violoncello, and the Borden has a bass flute. Now there is a fifteenth to go on top of either the principal and open diapason, or on top of the violone and violoncello. Now there is an open flute to go on top of the bass flute and Borden, or my favourite sound, which is to have that, and then this is my favourite sound on the whole organ, it's just so gorgeous. The strings on the swell, the open flute floor and the pedal, and you just... I love it so much. Have a mixture, four ranks. On top of the 15th, and uh, I'll just put on everything. Da, da, da. With the 32 foot. I've been sitting here for hours and like, uh, it's on air conditioned in this hall, I'll put it that way. A trombone 16 foot. Fagotto, 16 foot. Uh, trumpet 8. Uh, clarion 4. With the trombone. instead. Wonderful. Now we have a 32 foot contra trombone. <laughs> it's 
sounds a lot better right in the auditorium than it does here because you're just getting the harmonics and not the actual fundamental. It is in tune. Um, it was tuned very recently. Now, of course, everyone's favorite thing to do, which is just to put on the intro whole full organ. Um, trumpets included. <laughs> Big sound. Well, oh, thank you for joining me. Um, I've got to be off, so uh, yeah, enjoy the video.